Steve sucked as a partner and I really want to discuss why. Every day there is a new video or a tweet kind of gushing over Steve and I really wanted to stop because Steve is not a good partner and I want to explain why in this video and I also want to talk about how women are encouraged to stay in relationships like this because they don't exhibit big deal breakers like cheating or violence and often we think that's the only reason why you need to break up with someone. So when Steve and Miranda meet, she's around 34. She is a Harvard trained lawyer and he is a 30 something year old bartender. And from the onset, they are not on the same tracks in terms of ambition. It's just, they're completely different tracks. Then as they're dating, as the relationship is budding, he's pushing to live with her. And I think that is a super red flag because if someone told you, if you had a friend who was a Harvard trained lawyer and she told you she was dating a bartender who was trying to move in with her within the first couple months of them dating, you would say that's a red flag, number one, and you would call him a homosexual because you would think, okay, he must not have a place to say because someone who's healthy and who wants to kind of really develop a strong relationship isn't pushing to move in with someone that quickly and i get a lot of flack about the ambition levels because people are like you know love is love you shouldn't care about people's background okay let's not talk about the uh job background in the ambition levels let's talk about him as an adult he never showed up as an adult he had to be taught how to be an adult by Miranda. She helped him find an apartment after they broke up. She took care of the puppy that she did not want initially. She had to address skid marks in his draws. And she had to urge him, kind of snapping at him like a mother, to follow up on his cancer diagnosis because he was dragging his feet on his own health. And it isn't until they break up that he decides to have a little bit of, of ambition and get on his own bar. But if I have the, I get the sense that if he did not meet her, I don't think that this would have been an option or something that he would be working towards because he never had that type of ambition and he had never had that type of drive to kind of show up as an adult in that way. And in one episode, or I think in the movie, Miranda said she worked 80 hours a week. Guys, we're supposed to work 40 hours a week and people are exhausted by that. 80 hours a week is insane. So if I'm working that long and I have to do additional labor, such as training you and teach you how to be an adult, um, I am teaching you and training you how to have ambition, that is not a sweet relationship. That is not an even ex exchange in that relationship. So I kind of understand why she was always on edge, kind of annoyed by him, because if I'm working eight hours a week, I don't have the patience to teach you these things. I don't have the patience to teach you how to be an adult, especially if we're the same age. And when I think about this relationship, I understand that the writers were trying to kind of show us a modern way to have a relationship, but they missed the mark a little bit because when a woman is the breadwinner, the gen and, and we want to disrupt the gender norms, the expectation is that the man is going to show up in emotional labor or domestic labor. And Steve never did that. So she's not only taking on the financial burden, but she's also having to show up emotionally and to uh, show up domestically. And that's one of the reasons why she had to hire a nanny. That's one of the reasons why when she went out of town or she wanted to go out of town, Steve called her saying that he couldn't do these things. He wasn't showing up as a partner who, you know, if they want to be progressive, this is not the way to do it. This is just him abiding by the same gender roles, but not even offering any financial incentives to state and abide by these rules. I also kind of get the sense, and this is just like my own perspective, that because Miranda was defined as the 
ugly friend that the expectation for her to just take what's given was put on, put on her more. I always got the sense that it's like, you're asking for too much because you're not attractive. You know, if you were attractive, then you can have these demands, but you're not. And the way they talk to her about her dating, that was kind of the, the feel that I got of it. Like, you're wanting too much. Why are you having such high standards? And that's all Miranda ever had was super high standards because she's like, I'm offering this much. Why can't I have a man offer the same as me? That's not a difficult ask. That is something that actually should be expected of a partner who dates a Harvard lawyer who was working 80 hours a week. I also got the sense that because their relationships weren't going well and like Big was emotionally unavailable and, you know, um, all Samantha, she didn't really have any emotionally available partners because their relationships weren't going well. Um, they kind of put Steve on a pedestal because he, he was giving her what they weren't receiving with their partners. And I think that is why she was often encouraged to kind of like stick it out, see what's going on. Like maybe you're wanting too much because their partners weren't giving them what they wanted. And they're like, well, he's showing up. Why, why wouldn't you like that? We wish we could have something like that. So that's my assessment on Steve.